differential protection relays are used throughout the electrical system as they provide a quick and reliable way of detecting a fault. The main applications are feeder protection, buzz bar protection, and generator or transformer protection. Let's look at a simple feeder circuit. Here we have a feeder circuit with end A which is the source of the power and end B which is the load. We therefore assume the power will flow from end A through the feeder and on to end B. To monitor the feeder, the differential feeder protection needs to compare the currents flowing through ends A and B. Let's now close the circuit breakers. Current will now flow from the source through the current transformers at end A along the feeder and through the current transformers at end B. The magnitude of the current will depend on the loads applied at end B. Regardless of the current magnitudes, if the system is healthy, the current flowing through end A will equal the current flowing through end B. Let's now apply the electrical fault at end B and see what happens. The current magnitude will now increase substantially at both ends A and B, but they will still have the same magnitude, and therefore the feeder protection system will not operate. This is called a through fault, as the fault current passes through the protection system. Let's now remove the fault. The current on both ends now returns to normal. Let's now apply fault on the feeder. The current from the source at end A now increases substantially to feed the fault. The current at end B remains the same, as it's still just feeding the loads connected to end B. There is now a large difference between the currents at ends A and B. The feeder protection immediately detects this condition and trips both of the circuit breakers, <laughs> removing the fault from the electrical system. Let's now look at a feeder circuit in a fully interconnected system. The main difference between this feeder and the previous feeder is that power can now flow into the circuit from both ends. How can this happen? Well, let's look at a typical transmission network. Here we have a typical network with the generators inside a power station at the top supplying power to the main feeder station, substation A. This will then feed power to all of the other substations of the transmission network, substations B, C and D. Let's now close the circuit breakers. Once the circuit breakers are closed, we can see that power flows from the generator, through the main substation, through the feeders and onto the individual substations, which then feed the loads. It is obvious that power flows from the top to the bottom. This is normally called a split system as all of the individual substations are fed separately from the main source of power. Let's now see what happens to the system if we have a fault. Straight away, the current from the generator increases to feed the fault. This then passes through substation A onto the faulted feeder. There is no contribution to the fault current from any of the other substations, and they carry on feeding their load currents. This is not the way that most transmission networks are run, and that's because we need additional flexibility to share power between the substations when equipment is taken out for maintenance or goes faulty. To achieve this goal, we provide additional interconnectors in between the substations. These allow power flow in either direction, which provides flexibility and allows the load currents to be shared evenly. This is normally called a solid or solidly connected system. Let's now apply our feeder fault again and see what happens. As before, the currents increase in both the generator and the source substation as they feed the fault. But this time, some of the currents change direction and we backfeed the fault from substations B, C and D. Let's now look at our feeder again. Let's close the circuit breakers. As before, 
The currents at both ends A and B are the same, and the feeder protection is stable. Let's now add a fault on the feeder. This time, because it's a fully interconnected system, the current magnitudes on both ends A and B both increase, and the current on end B reverses direction as it feeds the fault from the rest of the network. The currents are no longer balanced on A and B. The feeder protection detects this difference and trips the circuit breaker, <laughs> clearing the fault from the system. Systems are designed to be either solidly connected, where we need to deal with the possibility of backfeeds, or split, where we don't. Solid systems obviously have a lot more flexibility, which is why we use them on transmission systems, and the protection systems tend to be complex at this voltage level anyway so there's not really any financial impact from the backfeeds. For distribution systems, we normally only have simple overcurrent protection. To provide a solid system, we would need directional overcurrent protection, which would be quite an additional expense, as this protection also needs voltage transformers. For this reason, we normally keep it simple and operate a split system at this level. Let's look at a bus bar. Here we have an electrical system with an incomer feeding a bus bar connected to four feeders. A bus bar protection scheme needs to measure all of the currents flowing into and out of the bus bar. The bus bar differential scheme therefore needs to measure the currents on all the incomers and feeders. Let's now close the circuit breakers. As you would expect, the current magnitudes on each of the circuits varies continuously as the loads applied to those circuits changes, but the sum of the currents flung into and out of the bus bar will always equal zero. Let's now apply fault on one of the feeders. The current magnitude on the incomer will now increase substantially as it feeds the fault. If it's a fully connected system, the direction of the current on some of the feeders may also change as they backfeed power into the system. This will depend on the configuration of the network connected to the substation. But regardless of the direction and magnitudes of these currents, the sum of the currents will still be zero, and the bus bar protection system will not operate. Let's now remove the fault. Let's now apply a fault on the bus bar. Again, the current magnitudes will increase on the incomer and all of those feeders able to backfeed the fault. But this time, because some current is leaking out of the system, the sum of the currents on the incomers and feeders connected to the bus bar no longer equals zero. The bus bar protection system operates, tripping all of the circuit breakers connected to the bus bar. This clears the fault from the rest of the system. <laughs> 